Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you a PCV mod that I decided to do after struggling with my daughter's PCV system. You may remember when I was in Cincinnati, I seen her intake tube wasn't connected right. I went to connect it. It broke, took it to an auto parts door, tried to get a hose for it. They broke it even more. So that sent me to thinking of a better way to deal with some of this PCV stuff. One of the main arteries of the PCV system is this hose here. It plugs on the oil box right there. That goes up to the side of the intake on the passenger side. This goes around to the intake tube and that goes on the PTC valve. So, uh, and this actually connects to that PTC valve as well. Well, if for some reason this piece breaks or you're going in there to replace the PCV system, you got to replace this part. Now, one of the problems with the PCV system is that this stuff gets old, it gets brittle, it cracks and breaks if you're in there messing around doing something else. And if you break this hose, you're going to have to replace it. So, Volvo actually got smart. In 1999, they switched to this aluminum tube assembly. Normally, when you do the PCV kit on a 99 or newer vehicle, it has this hose, but it's not included in the kit because this hose alone is about $200. What I decided to do before I remembered or realized that the 99 and newer vehicles has an aluminum tube is I made a brass hose and replaced this plastic with brass. I did a couple of vehicles like that in the last month or two. So in this video, I'll show you how I did that. All of the supplies and the tools to make that uh, modification cost me about $45, maybe a little less. Well, this hose right here alone cost about $55 or $60. The thing about it is, this is almost a one-time use. In the uh, copper kit I'm about to show you that I manufactured, it cost... Uh, the whole thing cost me that amount, but I was able to make three or four pieces out of the material that I purchased. So, in essence, it was like $15 to manufacture this thing for each unit. Again, you can replace that plastic one with this aluminum one from the newer cars, but brand new, this stuff is about 200 bucks. Well, guess what? If you could find one of these in the junkyard off of a five-cylinder car, I pulled this off of one, and the junkyard actually only charged me about five bucks for this hose. So, instead of making the one out of copper, you can get this aluminum one out of the junkyard and simply clean it and put new connection ends on the end of it. Again, the oil trap box is under the intake manifold. This hose wraps around there and connects to the intake tube down there and if you make it out of copper you'll probably never have to replace it again and you'll have less issues with it breaking on you uh, during this lifespan and if you get one of these you can replace it with one of the newer style aluminum ones here's a video today I've decided to work on my little project here if you've ever done a PCV system you know this is the main hose that goes from the oil trap box over to the uh, intake tube on the turbo cars. Now, of course, if you buy this part from a decent retailer, it has a lifetime warranty on it. I'm not real excited about lifetime warranties because I don't like redoing the labor. To pull this hose off and put it back on for most people, five, six hours, for me, it's uh, probably looking at about an hour, hour and a half, but I don't ever want to have to replace the hose again. Now, uh, some of you may recall recently that I was in Cincinnati. 
I uh, was poking around on my daughter's car and seen the tube was loose from the intake tube. Now that system has been on her car maybe close to four years. I reached down to reconnect the hose. The piece snapped off in my hand. I went to try to adjust and fix it. Snapped again, snapped again, snapped again, snapped again. It's totally deteriorated and no good. And now I need to replace the whole hose. I already have a copper cutting tool, which I don't know, may have cost me nine bucks. I bought this from Home Depot. It's half inch piping, basically the same as that, with an ID of uh, three eighths, which is the same as that. This is 10 foot of it. Then I bought the small quarter inch um, OD, which is similar to what is on the end of this, and I bought 20 feet of that. I want to say, I don't know, I probably paid $20 for that, $18 for that. So I'm into this uh, for somewhere around uh, $40, $45. I also purchased this tube bending set, which allows you to bend tubing. Uh, if you don't have the regular tube bender, that's not good for half inch. And since this is half inch, I got this spring set and it's supposed to be good from a quarter inch up to five eighths OD. So I'm good to go with bending my tube. So I'm going to go ahead and get started building my own custom tubing. And if you want one of these, I can probably make them available for purchase for you so that you can have one and uh, or you could just build them yourself however you want to do it. These are the items that I purchased. I got all of it from Home Depot. Let me go ahead and get started and I'm going to start off by measuring the actual tube that I need to replicate the main tube that uh, crumbles a lot as well as that small tube. First thing I did was measure my tube, 25 and a half inches. Not sure what that is in centimeters for you metric guys, but let me go ahead and pull that amount off of my half inch tubing and cut it. So I measured from the tip over there down to where I need to cut it off, 25 and a half inches. So you open this up, you put this over where you need to cut it like that and then you tighten the knob down while you roll this over. So let me get it on there and see if I could show you live action how to cut the pipe. With this little tool here, you tighten it on there. You can see the little blade there and you just roll it around. Every time you roll around, you try to tighten the knob a little bit more. So this one is not tightening as good as I thought. Let me try to do it with my other hand here. I guess I'm gonna need two hands to do that. Hold on a second. All right, tighten it a little more. Go around again. Tighten it a little more. Go around again. I'm gonna need my other hand again. About your third or fourth time around, the pipe will break for you. And it'll have a nice edge on it. It won't be a sharp, jagged edge that's dangerous for cutting people. taking me longer because I'm working with one hand instead of two. Alright, there it is. Nice, clean edge. If you have the full size pipe cutter tool, it has a little piece of metal that you can put in the end of that and go around and take out the little edges on the inside of the pipe, but the outside is fine. shouldn't cut you. I'm going to straighten out the first part of this pipe as best I can to match the curvature of the one that goes on there. This side goes to the box. It curves and swoops up and goes over to the intake. So let me work on straightening this pipe out and then I'm going to use one of these uh, bending tools to bend these two curves into it. I have the first pipe bent in the shape. So, as you can see, it's about the same length down there 
about an eighth or a quarter inch difference up there and it's pretty much the identical shape this way and it's a little bit different when it comes this way so I'm thinking that should be good to go now I'm going to measure the smaller one and uh, cut and mount that one alongside it. Alright, I measured the small piece which seems to be 8th inch maybe and it came out to be 33 and 3 quarters. It's actually 34 but I think the end that goes to the intake is always a little bit longer than it needs to be. I would say probably a quarter to a half inch longer so I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of that end of it. So let me go ahead and um, cut my quarter inch. And quarter inch, like I said, is bigger than it should be, but it's probably a good size for it. I want to reiterate that you really need to use these uh, two pipe bending tools, either the springs or the other kind, because if you try to bend this piping, without a tool it will crimp and you don't want a crimp in none of this stuff it'll also flatten out sides and stuff like that so do your best not to uh, try to do this without a pipe or two bending tools sad to say you even need these tools when you're straightening it out I straightened this one out without the tool and it actually put a little flat spot on it here and I couldn't get the bending tool over that. So make sure you use the uh, bending tools even to straighten out from the roll. Alright, now I'm going to cut this pipe which should be a little easier seeing how it's a quarter inch pipe. Thanks. Better if you cut it instead of breaking it off. <clears throat> that way you don't close the end of it. There it is. The large pipe took me 20 minutes to get it bent the way I wanted it. This one, because it's such a small tube, it should I should better bend it in four or five minutes. Alright, here's the other tube going down and up and over to the intake that way so I'm going to double check that with one that's laying around here on the ground in the shop and then I'm going to put these tubes through the insulation that I have here to have this set and ready to go now due to the fact that this quarter inch tubing is bigger than this eighth inch tubing or maybe it's three sixteenths you're going to have a little bit of a hard time stretching that end piece over there maybe on both ends so you may need to do a silicone hose I think the one on the intake side will be fine the one on this side will be a little challenging so you may just want to get about an inch and a half piece of uh, quarter inch ID silicone tubing to connect this to the side of the intake manifold. Now if you're going to use your old insulation like I'm going to, you need to break this in a few pieces and then work it out of the tube. For instance, I could pinch there and then work the insulation and that uh, plastic crawls out of the tubing. Now I have all of the old tubing out. I'm going to push the new tubing in. I'm going to put uh, four little pieces of tape on these two tubings so that they don't get twisted up inside my insulation when I slide it through. And there I have it folks, my first Robert DIY PCV breather kit for the turbo cars 94 through 98. This end of the assembly you want to make this thinner quarter inch line at least an inch and a half maybe two inches shorter and make up the difference from the line to the intake manifold with some silicone tubing. And uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and test this hose on the vehicle tomorrow. I already purchased the ends for it, so I should be good to go. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.